understanding of that which we sing, or that which we pray, or that which we read. Hello, we don't understand it. So if you, if the Muslim guy pick a chat with you, you can't keep up with him. Because he understands why he's doing what he's doing. Even if it is nonsense, he still understands this come nonsense. On, on, he on. can defend this nonsense. He know why he's involved in this nonsense. Go ahead, sir. But you call it nonsense and you call it your sense. But you can't tell him why you believe your sense. You can't tell him why you defend your sense. You can't tell him your personal experience about that which you are calling your sense. And putting down his as nonsense. And Sunday after Sunday you sing. And you rock to the beat. But you're not rocking to the message of the beat. Because the message of the beat goes straight to your lifestyle. How you live your life. It's a great change. So let me start on that note. I don't know how far I'm going to get. But let me begin there. You're a new creature when you receive the Lord. Pastor, explain that or expound on that a little bit for me. It means that this old boy standing in front of you, before he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, he was dead. He was breathing through his nostrils, eating through his mouth or with his mouth. He was doing all the things that people who have physical life do. But his spirit, because remember, it's not only his spirit. And let me address the spirit concept, because some folks said they don't believe in no spirit. I don't care what you want to believe in. I know what the Bible said is true. Hello, somebody. Yeah. And the Bible says God made man physical, but he blew spirit in man. And it is the spirit that caused him to become a living person. Yeah, Hello? Yeah, that means you are a spirit. Now, before you accepted the Lord, you were dead. Amen. Come on, touch yourself and say, before I accept the Lord, I was dead. What do I mean by you were dead? How okay, can you dead when you were alive? You were alive in the flesh, but you were dead in the spirit. You were alive as a person, but hell was your destiny. There was no turning around. That's where you were going, and you couldn't stop it. You couldn't help it. However, God had pity upon us. And he sent his son. And let's do a little bit of correction here also. Because when we said he sent his son, God is no papa. And I have no big son named Jesus. Hello? Amen. God no sit. Because you know something? When I was growing up, you know I think the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost was? I think that God was the big one. You know, the big daddy and sit on a big chair, son. Chair big. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> you know, not the big one. <laughs> don't don't get on his bad side. But then he might have a little son. And his little son said, Daddy, I will go and die for Adam. You know, there's a whole other thing going on in church that, is, that messes up you. So true. So true. So true. So So he called him. He said, will, will anyone up here and go and die for Adam? And Jesus said, I will. You know, the little son. Oh, yeah. So I thought it was like that. And so the little and God says, "Okay, son, since you will go, go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna by the Holy Spirit, I'm gonna move up on that young girl here. Send an angel, go tell her, and, and it's called the Annunciation of the, the the birth of Christ. And he's gonna go and move up on her, and uh, she's gonna conceive, and you're gonna put on flesh. Eh? So, so, so I saw them as." one greater than the other. Just like uh, if you speak with the, 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 the Jehovah's Witness, they do believe in Jesus Christ. And they also believe that he's a God. But they refer to him, thank you son, they refer to him for the Jehovah's Witness, he is the mighty God. You see how we mess up? 
And the father, because when I go, when, when I get a chance to talk to them, I really do talk to them. And uh, somebody end up leaving, but it's not me. Hello. Come on. <laughs> Hello. So they said, they said Jesus is, is is God, yes, but he's not the Almighty. So, so did you see confused there? They, they said the Father is the Almighty God. So the Almighty, the All and the Mighty make a big difference. Watch that now. Come on, come on. You see how drunk we are? That's why the Bible said we got to be not drunken with wine. Be not drunken with, 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 with the teachings of the Pharisees and, and, with, and, and be carried out, uh, uh, about with all wind of doctrine. You must know something so people can tell you nonsense. Come on, somebody. And the Bible is there for you to read it and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Or those people will mess you up. Yes. So there see two words in the Bible. One is A L M I G H T Y, and one is M I G H T Y. So they attribute the one with the L because it has more letters. It has two more letters, so we have to give Big Daddy that one. Huh? The Almighty and the Mighty. There is no such thing. Do you know how Jesus made it clear when he came? My wife and I had that conversation the other day. Because the Jesus only people have it messed up too. And the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost nonsense have it messed up too. Hello? Because Jesus simplified so easily. You know what Jesus said to them? You know what they said to Jesus? Eh? They said, Jesus, look how long we've been with you. That is the disciples speaking, not the Pharisees. He said, how long we've been with you? And all you ever talk about is the Father. Now, if he's always talking about the Father, that is something important. It means that I cannot rule it out. Because he's always talking about the Father. Yes. So, if there's a Father, I need an understanding to understand why he's always talking about the Father. I don't know why I'm going down this way. Because this is, this is not even what I want to talk about. Hello? But, but it's important to understand. Because you know how many you're sitting down here can't defend it. Don't fully understand it. Huh? So you just follow what everybody say. Whichever one so better you follow it. Hello? You cannot serve God like that. Hello? The Bible says you got to know the truth. And it is the truth that set you free. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. So they questioned Jesus about it. And Jesus said to them, Listen, man, how much time I must tell you that if you see me, you see the Father? Can it can answer me any simpler than that? He, and he, but he elaborated that a little bit. He says, the far, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. He that seeth the Father, seeth me. Hello? Because the Father and I are one. So let's let's be let's be let's be fear to the ignorance and the arrogance that exists. Let's be let's be fear. Jesus, yes, you said you are one. So why on the cross you are crying, Father, forgive them. Who are you talking to? You said you are one. You are mad? You are crying to yourself then? What's going on? The rich young ruler came, knelt down at your feet and said, Don't good master. He said, Don't call me good. Only my father is good. You also, on every occasion, you said, I only say that which I have heard of my father. So what's going on here? Is it you we should believe, or is it the Father, or is it the two of you, or how can you be one? Sounds confusing here. What's going on? Huh? What's going on? How many of us fully understand? Let me see your hand. If you fully understand what's going on, you fully understand. And don't be afraid if you don't fully understand. Don't, don't be shy. Don't worry. Because I didn't understand it all to myself. So when I kneel down, this man, I for pray. Because I know how to get to the Father, you know? yeah. I make sure of what Jesus we are so sweet. Hmm. You understand what I mean? Because I want Jesus to introduce me to the Father. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Never yeah. understanding that I was already talking to the Father. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Hey, because the Father is in Him and He's in the Father. Yeah. It's one yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. Just yeah. three dispensation. Amen. Did you know that Jesus will cease to exist? I don't know why I'm getting into this. Because it's deep. Do you know that Jesus will cease to exist? Read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
I don't know if I have time to go into that because it's the Holy Ghost I'm talking about. But the, the, Jesus said that all power will be handed to the Father. Do you know why Jesus exists in the first place? Why we have a Jesus? Or well, you need to come to Bible school. You know why Jesus exists? Jesus was a given name. Jesus was a given name. It's a earthly name. Christ is his divine name. John the Apostle used the word Christ Jesus more than he used Jesus Christ. He put the God in the divine aspect of him before the humanity. Hello? Hello? Amen. But why Jesus exists? Came to save human beings. So after that is over, there's no need for Jesus. There's no need for God to be operating as Jesus. Hello? Just write down the scripture. Go on and read 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I don't remember the verse here. track. If you want to get those deep things, we have to talk about it some other time. But yeah. don't become confused with the Trinity and with the Jesus only uh, 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 quarrel. I call it a quarrel. Yeah. Where two arguments is quarreling against each other. Amen? Yeah. And we, we don't want no quarrel. Amen? Yeah. We want understanding. That's what yeah. we need. Because we can build on understanding, but quarrel will hold us prison. Yeah. Will imprison us. Amen? Yeah. So we will talk about that. But let me get back to the new creature. So now you're a new time. Uh, um, you're a new creature when you accept Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's important to understand what that means. The reason for why it is important for you to understand it, if you don't understand what happened, then you may continue living the same old life. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. When you say you were a new creature, remember as a whole creature, you were dead. Why were you dead? Because it doesn't matter what your last name is, whether it is brown, sterling, green, red, blue, pink, purple, you are, you, we could trace our genealogy right back to the first man and woman. Hello? Hello? No, that first man was dead because he disobeyed God. Because he disobeyed God, the sin he committed was transmitted through his blood. Hello? Amen. Through every child that he will ever have down to you and I, to the baby that is not even born yet, will born in sin because the first man sinned. Because remember, God did not create a second man. It's not like when Adam sinned, God says, okay, I'll just get rid of Adam and I'll make start over the whole human race and make a different man. That never happened. The, the, the population of the world continued down through the line of this man and woman. So whatever this man and woman was, that's what all the children, the descendants, the generations that came after they're going to be, which they are sinners because they're sinners. Their daddy sinned against God and they become recipients of that sin. And because the sin is there, death is there because the wages of sin is yes. So death was passed upon man. So we were all born dead. As pretty as that little Gucci is. He, you know those little Gucci? You know who we call Gucci? We have all kinds of names. Gucci is a little baby. When the baby don't go, the little baby them just born the pretty seed and net. Oh Gucci, Gucci. He's a Gucci little devil. Amen. He's a sinful Gucci. That's right. Sin her. Give her a little chance and see when she start taking the candy and put it behind her back like this. Mm -hmm. And nobody taught her. Right. Hello? Man. Because sin is naturally in her. And she had a mouth full of the sugar. Mm -hmm. I said, did you trouble it? Mm -hmm. Can I open the mouth? She said, no. So I laugh him out and shake the head. said, no. Who taught her that? Sin. Sin. So that means we are destined for what? Hell and, and church nowadays nobody don't want to talk about hell. 
But you can hear that word in this church like you're crazy. Every Sunday you come and make sure all when it's not relevant, all when it's not fitting to what I'm saying, I still say hell three times. Hell, 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 just to scare you from it. Hello? Because you know what God here. Amen. Is that amen? amen? Is that amen? amen? That's a good reminder. Amen. So sin is in man. And that is why you're dead. So when you accept Christ, what happened is that Christ gives you now a new spirit. Amen. But people don't understand it. So you are born again. Born again means you're a new person. Hello? Me not the same old man, you're not the same. But you say, but pastor, I went home and I still did some things that I used to do. And I, it's not you do them. It's the sin that is within you. Hello? That's why the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 7, he said, for the things that I would not do, I find myself doing. So Paul said, no, this is crazy. If me no one's teeth the white towel, then how on God's where we end up teeth in it? Hello? So Paul said, let me go check out and see where I go. Can I preach like that? Yeah, man. He said, let me go check out something. Something all right. The things that I don't want to do, I'm doing. And the ones that I really want to do. Because you know how many same people in here in their mind that want to do everything right but not doing it? Let me tell you what Paul says is the problem. And I was glad when I learned this too. Because it's not only Paul that have that problem. I had that problem too. I found myself, Jonathan Brown, doing things that I, I didn't want to do. I want to be so godly and so righteous and so holy. I want to walk on cloud nine with Jesus Christ every moment. But it wasn't happening. So I had to go to God. And, and God said, go to Paul. Sometimes you go to God and say it to somebody. He said, go to Paul. So I go to Paul and he said, Paul, start talk to me. Paul said, son, the same thing used to happen to me. <laughs> and I went on an investigation to find out. And this is what I learned. Paul said, you ready for this? Hmm. I said, please tell me because this thing is haunting me. I want you to ask those of you that is haunting. Because some of you are afraid, afraid to hold up the sin. Hmm. Like you want to keep him there. Don't keep him. Shame him. Yeah. When you confess him, you shame him. Yeah. When you hold him, I say, Pastor, me have the problem too. She sin said to you, why you say that? Shut up. Because sin is a private partner. Hello? Sin the like publicity. Oh Lord, I couldn't talk about that. Sin like to stay in a corner. And sin said, don't make nobody know. Just stay with me and you alone. Because you're going to be so shame. Sin said, if anybody know you're doing these things, and watching this kind of movie, and reading everybody going to cry. They're going to look at you and wonder, where but we yeah, think you yeah. see him. So since they're going to tell them, yeah. <laughs> since they keep it to yourself, hello? Yeah. Because you know why? Since they have a plan to carry you to hell. Yeah. And if you tell people, you might get help. Yeah. Or oh, somebody should say amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So Paul says, if therefore I do the things that I would not do, that I don't want to do, Paul said, it is no longer I that do it then. Because I didn't want to do it. So I start having a problem with Paul. I said, but Paul, you man, how comes you do things and then you say it's not you doing it? So Paul, but God sent me to you, but now you're messing up the head. Because you tell me you do the thing and now you say it's not you that do it. Talk to me straight, let me understand. Paul said, sit down, let me tell you what I mean. Paul said, listen, because I don't desire to do it, and I find myself doing it, it is not I that do it, it's the sin that liveth inside of it. So Paul said, even though you believe the Lord, even though you get baptized, even though you might have the Holy Spirit, sin still lives inside of you. Hey, sin how many of you realize that? How many, how, how many yes. find that? Yes. Don't you realize sin inside of you? Yes. 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 Don't you realize that you're not on God and if you don't stand strong, yes. you still sin against God? Yes. Hello? Yes. <laughs> Why? Because sin is still in the flesh. And Paul says, what happened is this. Sometimes the spirit that wants to please God and the flesh that wants to please the devil they war against each other. Amen. So you don't want to do the thing, but your flesh said, do it, man. Yes. You can pray after you finish. 
you can repent after because God is merciful and God will forgive you. And, and, and sin, the sin in your flesh that preach to you in order to convert you to sin. And, and uh, be, by you listening to the devil, like how Adam and Eve, like how Eve listened to the devil, you become convinced and converted by the devil. And you said, yes, let me go ahead and sin. So Paul said what happened is that sin take you captive. Put on shackles on your hands and feet and take you as a prisoner to carry out its wishes. Hello? Clap your hands and give the Lord. 230. Are we getting anything from that? Romans 7, write it down. And is that young man working with me to find those scriptures so that you get the verses? So you read it. So when you find yourself in a situation where you continually or continuously finding yourself in sin that you don't want to do, it's not from your heart. Take courage from the word of God. Amen. Hello? Amen. So when you're a new creature, when you're a new creature, you're a new person. You're a new person. Now, you have to realize that. It's so funny that God leave you to understand that. 